righteousness of God is God's nature and character and his ability to put things right. When you come to a point that you see, you know in your heart, only God can put it right. I need this. Only God can put it right. You need to be a righteousness of God. Up to that time, your homegrown piety, fear of the Lord you always had, and, 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 and those little, little prayers that we depended on God. We felt it covered our nature. But over a period of time, something begins to happen. You know, only God can do it right. Now this evening, if we are saying, only God can do it right, there is no other qualification needed, God will put it right. Will you say it in your mind? I'm thinking of this only God can put it right. No other qualification does he look for. Your sin, your heart, only God can put it right. Then the righteousness of God immediately comes. Who needs an unqualified A parent who is a child who has a teacher. Who needs an architect? Probably when you want to build a house. And who needs God our Father when you know him? This is the only God can control. Then you meet with the righteousness of God. So, what is the righteousness of God? God making it right for us. What we made wrong intentionally or unintentionally, what got derailed and lost track over a period of time, God puts it right. There are four things about us that God has to put right. One is called sin. We say it is sin. Self is the reason for sin. And sin is when we violate. God's nation, God's headship, God's sovereignty, that is called sin. When we violate God's character and God's goodness, then there's another thing called iniquity. When you say the iniquity, iniquity is when we violate our own body. Our own character. We do something dishonorable. That is iniquity. Sometimes only we know that. And iniquity brings diseases. Third one is transgression. Everybody understands that. Transgression is when we violate God's laws. Last one is trespass. Trespass is when we violate someone else. Did you understand before? Sin, violating God's character. Iniquity, violating ourselves. Transgression, breaking God's law. Trespass, violating someone else. Did you understand? So James says, when we violate someone else in trespass, confess your Trespass one to the other, not your sin, not your iniquity, not your transgression, but your trespass. Required. Trespass has to do with what we have violated in another person. So we go and tell that person, I am sorry, with my words I have violated you. Then God heals us. We don't go and tell other people our sins, we don't tell, go and tell other people our iniquities. We don't tell other people our transgressions, but we go and tell other people. James 5.16 says, Trespass because you want to put it right with that person, what you have violated. And all this is covered by God's righteousness. You don't have to pay ever. Jesus paid the premium on the cross for our life insurance. And Jesus pays. Every monthly, weekly, 
daily our needs are met. How many of you find that Jesus has to pay hourly installments for us? Grace, mercy, righteousness. Or you, you need it only once a year. Or you need it only once a month. No, it's not. We need Jesus' grace every hour. You understand? When did he pay the premium? On the cross of Calvary. Do you understand Calvary now? He paid it all. But on a daily basis, we need him to. What John 1 9 says, if we confess our sin, he is just faithful to forgive us our sin and then cleanse us immediately of the consequence of that sin. When we have, when we confess our sin to Jesus, what is he able to do? He forgives us our sin and then he cleanses us of all the consequences that can come because of that sin. Did you understand? Yes, he doesn't go. We will say thank you, Jesus. This righteousness, which is of God. Now the second part of that single verse is through faith in Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. John 14, 6. And there is only one name given under heaven whereby man may find salvation. That is the name of Jesus Christ, Acts 4, 12. And there is only one mediator between God and man, and his name is. Christ 1 Timothy 2 5. And he ever never made any decision for us that he is able to make, save them, he is able to save them to the uttermost that come to God by him. Hebrews 7 25. Thank you, Lord Jesus. No other name whereby man might be saved. And is his name sufficient? Do you want many other names? His name is sufficient. Through faith in Jesus Christ. Nothing else. Trust in Him. Faith in Jesus Christ. Third part. To all. That is to say, everybody has something that only the righteousness of God can bear through Jesus Christ. Or, blessed in you, born to a Christian family, you conducted your life in dignity. Oh, then on the other side of the spectrum, the deranged, the degraded, the worst, the man whose life was down in the doldrums and in, in, in great ways. Oh, faith in Jesus Christ. No wonder you faith in Jesus Christ. It's to all and all who believe, you have only to believe. Finally, for the final, that is no difference. There is no difference. God pardons abundantly. It is easy to please God. We read last night. When we come to Him, He, he is easy to find. God is not difficult to find. He has made Himself available to us. 103, verse 3. There is Psalm 103. He forgives my iniquities and heals my diseases. So why do sickness comes because of things that violated my body, my character, and God forgives and He heals diseases. I'm not saying all sickness has come to like that, but some sicknesses have come, not only in my generation, but in a previous generation. So Bible says in Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, iniquity visits. Not a welcome business to some business we like to have. Iniquity we don't like to have. But without our permission, without our knowledge, iniquity finds a door. We don't even know what that door was. But when iniquity visits, Exodus 20 verse 4 says, some iniquity may visit from great grandfather to grandfather to father to you. But in our generation we can take action. God forgives our iniquity. It's not going to run down and he heals our disease. God forgives our iniquity. He heals our disease. That's the ministry of Jesus. Now let's see how it came to effect in Matthew chapter 12 on one Sabbath day. At that time, Jesus went through the 
green fields on the sun. And his disciples are And an argument arose. In the process of the argument, Jesus says in Matthew 12, verse 6, I say to you that believe that in this place there is one greater than the temple. And subsequently he says, in this place there is one greater than the Sabbath. And again he says, in this place, there's one greater than sorrow. And again he says, in this place, there's one greater than all the prophets put together. Who is that? Jesus Christ. In this place. He said this in the synagogue of Galilee. One of the synagogues of Galilee. If you check out the scripture, you will find this in Babylon, in John chapter 5, verse 19, when he got involved in a dialogue with the Pharisees and the scribes, and when he said he is the Son of God, and everyone who will be given life will hear him. Pharisees got very angry, wanted to kill him, so he left Judea and he moved into Galilee. And he's moving not with down, but Pharisees and scribes are dragging his every movement to catch him. So that they can indict him. That's the text of which he speaks now. And he says, one greater than the temple. Now, why is Jesus Christ greater than the temple? People come to the temple to worship God. Jesus Christ came into us to make us the temple. Why is Jesus Christ greater than the temple? Now, the people come into the place, the temple, to worship God. Jesus Christ came in human form that He might make each one of us the temple of God. Did you understand? Why is Jesus Christ greater than the temple? Because He has come to make you the temple of God. Did you understand? So, in your heart and in your life, you be worship unto God. You are not the temple of God. You are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. I am the temple of God. Jesus. By His one incarnation, by His death on the cross, by His resurrection, and coming back to take up His life in each one of us, He has made us the temple of God. Not made with hands, but transformed by the Holy Spirit. Why is he greater than the Sabbath? You remember Sabbath? First day God created light. Second day God created air and water. What a scientific God we have. Sixth day, in his image, he created man and woman. He couldn't do it in one person. So the image of God, complement of it came into male. And in the image of God, another complement of it came into woman. And two together make God. And a child is born. So when God created Adam and Eve in his image, on the sixth day, the seventh day, God invited them into this pressure and said, let's rest together, let's enjoy each other's company. That was called the seventh day. Do you understand? What is seven? Rest and joy. Please say it rest and joy. Because it was, and God at the end of the sixth day, what did he say? It was very good. It could have been ever after. It was very good. No improvement needed. But we know what happened. Seven was broken. In through the king, serpent came. And he somehow deceived man and woman into thinking God is not good. What did God say? It is very good. What did the serpent come and say? No. You remember? There's something more he did to give. How many times parents grab a child lovingly, giving all they have, and the peers convince the child what the parents gave is not good enough? Yes? Yes? Not good enough. How does this mystery happen? This is it the mystery? You built that child. You cared for that child. You put up the nappy for that child. Just yesterday, I was going somewhere and I was in I went to your kiss and in a playroom, the, there's a big 
sofa that had been kept against the door that she had come. 